my first day on Andromeda was uh, actually, I had to, Lexa and I were both filming Jason X in Toronto. And so I was flown here for, I think, like two days of filming and then I had to fly back. So I flew in um, to Vancouver. Um, I think I I think I stayed in a hotel that night, but then in the morning I was driven to set, walked onto set. My first memory is the cafeteria, um, and Trance was in the cafeteria. Uh, she was purple, and nobody had prepared me. Like, no, nobody had really talked to me about the look of the show, the aliens of the show. So first of all, I see Trance, this purple girl, in the middle of a bunch of human beings eating lunch, and then I'm like, uh, I gotta use the phone. So I go upstairs, and, uh, <laughs> my God, Brent, uh, was on the phone in his full Magog costume with the big fuzzy slippers with the runners underneath and the, the nails and his teeth. And he's on the phone <laughs> making a call. I'm like, what have I gotten myself into? Is it the Muppet show? Is it a space show? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> and um, then they got me into hair and makeup or whatever. Uh, my first, my very first shot was outside of the um, Andromeda, and I was waiting to, go, like the, the door was shut, and waiting back there with uh, Keith Hamilton Cobb. And uh, so he and I were supposed to make an entrance. There was a scene going on, the door was gonna open, and we we're gonna make an entrance. So I'm like, hey, how you doing? Uh, so, what's your name? He's like, Keith. <laughs> I gets back into character and waits for the door to open. I'm like, okay. 22 Type 2 Arclight Slip Fighters rigged for remote control. It was very bizarre um, entering the ship for the first time, you know, because my first time, my first shot was, I think, our third episode. And uh, it was literally entering the ship for the first time. It was kind of impressive and kind of uh, strange in a Muppet kind of way. <laughs> in a Muppet universe kind of way. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, the Andromeda Ascendant. Okay, I would just like to say for the record, we rule. The way the series was created, the, the, the Bible of the series, was very strong. And um, I think all of the characters were painted uh, as, as very strong individuals. And so there was something to step into, there was something to inhabit that w was credible. I mean, even though you have this kind of way out there world of aliens and space and all that stuff, they are real people. And I think that's... Um, one thing about everybody in the cast is is they're good actors, and so they inhabit those well-drawn characters very well. How are we going to spend our money? Let me guess. A little cottage by the lakeshore, white picket fence, dog, all the traditional mud foot accessories. Not even close. I have one word for you two. Seraglio. Uh, sir what? Seraglio. Slave girls and grapes. Unit guards. Classy. I think one of the things that, that distinguishes us maybe from other sci-fi shows or um, is a strong point anyway for Andromeda is the sense of humor. Um, and that comes from Kevin and trickles right down. I think everybody's kind of encouraged to toss in lines or mess with it a bit or um, take scenes that might be serious and a little bit tongue in cheek with them. Um, you still have to bring reality to it, but, but there, it's, it's a sense that sometimes there's a sense that this is also ridiculous and you've got to have a sense of fun about it. And uh, I think fans also appreciate that, you know, that we all kind of were like, nudge, nudge, yeah, we're in space. <laughs> I would never destroy Andromeda. You're another story, Captain. Along with anyone else who thinks that they can steal from me. When you get Kevin and Gord and Steve <laughs> and Lexa and myself, you know, it, everybody together, it, I mean, everyone feeds off of each other and uh, Gord will give you lines and Kevin will change lines and we'll come up with stuff. And um, so there's a little bit of fun on set too. I know, what the hell is that? It's exactly what it is. Hell. Really? Or Harper's ass. <laughs> oh my God, it's Harper's full moon. I think it's in all of our nature to find the humor in whatever is given to us. So we are always just kind of pushing it that way a little bit. We're just a, a group of people like that. We're not too earnest. <laughs> uh. 
always love uh, to be challenged and uh, engaged. So of course the flash episodes and the flash scenes were very engaging for me to do just because there's so much going on uh, physically and emotionally and acting wise. So I love doing those. Um, just being here on this set, I, I can think of um, one scene over there actually with Brent as a Magog and he's going through withdrawal. It was this bizarre kind of confessional scene where we're talking through a grate and he's going through this horrible starvation kind of withdrawal thing and, and I'm talking to him, realizing that I'm dealing with not just my friend but a monster. And you ask me one question. How dare I presume to know what the divine had in store for me? You said that somehow all my anxiety and all my pain and all my despair had a purpose, even if I couldn't see it. So now, Rev, what about you? For me, always my favorite scenes are between the actors, when there's something emotional going on. Um, just the other day, Trance and I got back to the relationship that we had in, in the first season, and that was touching too. You know, when you have those scenes between human beings, or alien to human <laughs> in space, that's what I kind of enjoy, and that's, those are my favorite memories of, of the show. Did you know that 82% of people on prison planets are flash addicts? You know what? They tell you that kind of stuff just to scare you. Sure, to scare you out of killing your neighbors. Look, I'm not going to pretend this crap is good for me. I know firsthand what flash can... I'm using minuscule doses for a limited time. It's medicine and it's working. I don't think there will be any more flash usage, <laughs> but Becca, I think, does deal with her addictions. I think she is an addictive personality. She's kind of all or nothing. So there are, you know, her, she deals with, um, she deals with substances. <laughs> I think there's always alcohol um, around and it's always a temptation and it's always, it's always there for her. There's always a bit of an edge um, and she'll never get over it. You know, it'll never be nothing to her. It'll always be kind of there in the back of her mind, but I don't think we'll ever see her fully blown doing flash and <laughs> squirting it in her eyes again. I think that was as far as you could take that one. Becca Valentine. She's not a typical heroine. She's quite faulty. <laughs> she has a lot of quirks and faults, and that's one thing that allows me to enjoy playing her and keep exploring her, is that she's not perfect by any means. Hey, don't hold back. Give me your best shot. Trafficked in illegal arms to Second Sun Rebels. Plotted to overthrow the tech police. Sold illegal blues to trans zoners. What can I say? I've been a bad girl. Bex is a bit of a, we, we like to call her a Nietzschean hag. <laughs> She's really drawn, what, what, who, what girl wouldn't be? She's drawn place? to the big, gorgeous, strong types and um, a lot of Nietzscheans are that, so she ends up, you know, having some flings. Also loves the bad boy. So whenever there's a criminal in town or a kind of wheeler dealer, shady kind of con man, she seems to get drawn in. And I, you know, I think that's shades of her father, her brother, all the men in her life. She doesn't really have a good role model except for Dylan. So she's kind of used to, to go in there. So yeah. Yeah, she gets into a bit of trouble in season five, too. <laughs> Some of the boyfriends are just bad, bad news this year. Okay, Peter, stop being weird. What is it? If you land the Maru, you die. I put explosives on your ship. 22, take five pickup, they only mark. Down the set. Action. If you land the Maru, you die. I put an explosive on your ship. It will detonate if you try to use your comm. What are you talking about? If you don't figure this out, you will die in a matter of minutes. If you try to communicate with anyone, you die. It will detonate if you use your calm. What are you talking about? If you don't figure this out, you're going to die in a matter of minutes. Well, Becca's look for season, I guess, some of season four and, and all of season five is, is this-ish, you know? Um, like I have, apparently it was established early on that I have nanobots in my hair and they can change the color. So now basically everybody wants me to be blonde, but, but some of her nanobots change it into streaks. <laughs> so she has black and brown and sometimes red streaks in her hair. Um, I think it's constantly evolving. 
You know, Becca is the one character. They like to have some consistency with, uh, like, the aliens and stuff. Like, I know trance. Now that they've established her, they, they like to keep consistent. But, um, and Dylan, like, he's our captain. He has to be generally consistent. But um, Becca is one of the characters that they can have a little bit of fun with fashion-wise. She doesn't have a homemade costume. She... I think the ship's falling apart. Um, she, she has a, uh, a costume that basically we shop for. So <laughs> I think the designer just likes to play with that a little bit. The other thing about the looks of season five that's interesting is that we are no longer so much in space. We're kind of stranded. We're in a bit of a backwater and, um, things have got a little bit funkier, a little bit dirtier, a little bit, you know. So that's something new that the designer's playing with. But you can't afford to pay me. <laughs> nope. Forget it. I've got an enormous shipment of funny fruit in there. The funny fruit goes bad, the maru smells like burnt orchard for weeks. It's nasty. Look, I'm sorry, but it's money out of my pocket to have the pleasure of helping you two out for free. Beck's not wild about being on planets, and yet, Seafra suits her just fine because she's making money, she's back to scamming, she's back to being a pirate which is kind of her nature, and she was never a very good military person. <laughs> she was never a good number one officer. So I think she's actually enjoying it quite a lot. It's a certain amount of independence and, um, and wheeling and dealing that she gets to do here. So in that way, being planet-bound, she's not planet-bound, but uh, galaxy-bound is, is good and suits her quite well. And I'm surviving just fine here, thanks. Okay, I'll pay you. Besides, adventure is worth more than survival. Yes, an adventure. Come on, Becca. You've never backed down from a challenge before. You know, I'm always touched when I get fan mail from uh, young women who, who think Becca's so cool. And I'm like, wow, that's great. Um, on a level, because what I'm trying to portray is a human being, um, that she has really strong qualities but that she's also has faults and um, that she's trying. She's trying to be her best and she's trying to learn about uh, loyalty and integrity. She's not there yet, but that she's always um, trying. And, and that's what I hope uh, people take away from, from her. And that's what I hope makes her human. One hundred episodes, guys. Not many shows get to that mark, so I just want to say thank you for everybody's hard work. We all thought we'd be lucky to get one or two seasons out of it, but it's been five and a hundred shows, and uh, it's developed into a quite uh, kind of family feeling. Um, it's a great place to go to work every day, and the crew is uh, has all been, most of them have been with us since the beginning, most of the casts, you know. Um, so this is a fantastic, uh, fantastic experience. It's the longest job I've ever had. It's an adventure. Maybe the greatest adventure anyone has ever seen. And if we succeed, you'll go down in history. You'll be heroes. And if we fail, we'll be dead. For sure, I think it's lasted so long because of the fan base. Sci-fi fans are dedicated, uh, detail-oriented. Uh, they love all the spins that uh, come with the show. They love the the details and the storylines, the characters. They keep track of everything, and um, they're loyal. So I think they keep us coming back. <laughs>